On this episode of the podcast, we have a, a special guest that's going to say a quick hi, and it's someone that everybody knows, and this is not something that I'm trying to do to like show off that I have famous friends, but John Cena is here, and he wants to say hi. He's actually on a Zoom call. Hey, guys. Hey, John Cena. How, well, how are you guys doing today? We're doing good. How about you, John? Oh, I'm doing great. All right. Well, thanks for stopping on the show. I would love to see you ne- again in the future. No problem, Ange. Keep the podcast up and keep keep going. Thanks, man. Wow. I mean, that's now that's cool. I mean, let's get a round of applause. John Cena himself came on my show, and now I can say that. And that's something that's just that's just like cool to me because I've met all these people but I've never met John Cena and now I have. So that's just cool. Um, On today's episode, we're talking about quarantine realizations. And let me explain what this means, okay? Because I don't even know if that fucking makes sense. It's just like, it's like clickbaity kind of, right? Like quarantine realizations, what the fuck does that mean? It means these are things that within the past two months of sitting at home, I've realized and and things that I, I think about that I fucking ponder on during the day and um, my life has changed a lot in the past couple months. I went from like having a girlfriend and like having a job and going to work every day and being like this fucking st- kind of starting to get a little robot-y for a little fucking minute there, starting to get a little bit robot Life was a little bit too good for comfort for me and I genuinely mean that. Um, my girlfriend was awesome. The job was awesome. It's not. It's none of their fucking faults. But for me, I have this anti-social thing, where if my if there's not a little bit of fucking chaos in my life, I get uncomfortable and I get like, okay, I don't fucking like this. Like if I was the type of guy to go get married and then like come home to my wife and the fucking kids are playing outside and the house is great and it's nice and clean. And the fucking, oh, there's steaks made. And, oh, you want a back massage? Oh, tomorrow morning, go to work. Like, I feel like fucking vomiting just talking about that. I need a little bit of something. My fucking, someone's yelling at me. Someone's pissed off. Someone's dying. There's shit that I have to clean up. I need something to, like, take control of. I felt like my life was taking control of me. And I don't want to fucking do that. I like to, and maybe that's maybe that's my uh, me problem. But regardless, I there's a lot of things that have changed in the past three months, and I'm my fucking happy happiness level is uh, really high right now because I feel like even though shit's fucking chaos in the world right now, and even though there's a lot of problems in my life right now. Um, I can look at them and identify them as like certain things that I'm working on, you know? And I like that. I think that when people talk about like the grind and like hustling and like whatever you're working for, I really enjoy the the grind stage. I really enjoy like the journey stage. And once I get to where I want to be, I always like up the bar and I raise it and I want to keep going because I don't give a fuck about the end goal. I want to like keep going. And keep going in my life right now, that analogy is like writing things down for my future and like thinking ahead and like thinking all these plans through and making sure that I can get some business after this quarantine ends and other departments and I can get my my work going in a different company that I'll be working for. Um, So my point is that my life has changed, but I think I do a good job at like identifying these problems and and trying to fucking plan shit. Um, I asked you guys, I said, what do you guys think is your favorite and least favorite part of quarantining? Um, I'm going to read those in a second, but I want to go over some of my thoughts. These are things I think are really important for maybe other people, for you guys to, to pay attention to. So first thing is that I think a lot of things right now, we're, we're taking a fucking three month break from our work or three month break from our drinking habits when it comes to like going out three month break from partying whatever the fuck you do that's outside of the house you're taking a break from and it could last another six months to a year I don't know how long it's gonna last it's looking like places are starting to reopen but if you guys are like me you'll probably still be inside for a while Um, and I think that this is kind of a, a hint 
to take shit really slow in your life. Um, and whether that's like your next job or a lot of people that are graduating college right now listen to this podcast, what you're going to do after college. Um, because when the world's moving very fast and you know your sister just got a huge job and your best friend is doing an internship and you're doing this, or not you, your friends are doing a bunch of shit. And now you have like this, you just graduated, you have a couple jobs that you could get and you have a, an internship that you really want, but you don't, you're don't. you not really set on anything. I think now is the time to like take advantage of being home and really fucking think through like, what do I want to be doing in the next five, 10 years of my life? And maybe fuck this internship. Like maybe I want to go code and like learn some shit at home. Now is the time to be doing that. And with relationships, especially when you're, this is something that I've noticed, okay? And for all the women, for the women that listen to this podcast or that are in my life or my mom or grandmother, any of them, this is just my fucking two cents, okay? This doesn't have to do with anyone in particular. Um, well, it's based on experience, okay? Let's just say that. I, I noticed that because we're very lonely right now and... Like that's loneliness is a fucking common thing right now. Um, when I'm talking to people, I, I notice that people that aren't really normally interested in me are like more interested in me. And that's something you got to keep on your fucking radar. Okay. Loneliness is fucking sky high right now. So for all you guys or girls and it's, it's vice versa. It's not just women. It's guys too. I'm sure I'm just saying this because from a guy's point of view, I talk to women um, but like if you're texting every day and you're like really trying to force something, it's probably a good idea to take a step back and really look at, do I like this person right now? Am I really crazy about this person or am I just really fucking lonely and they're there? Because, uh, I know a lot of relationships are breaking up because of the quarantine, a lot of divorces, a lot of shit's going on because we are butting heads more than ever now and we don't have time to get out of the house and like get a break. But at the same time, this is not fucking like, it's not time to be married and it's not time to fucking go look for a relationship because I feel like right now my not, and this is not personal for me, but normally I'm a very horny person and I want to talk to people if I'm single, but right now my fucking, I'm, I'm, I'm past that. Right now, I realize everyone's really lonely, so I'm fucking enjoying my time alone. I don't really want to see people. I don't really want to hang out that much. I don't want to fucking do random hookups because for me, it's like, oh, now you want to hook up because you're fucking home alone and you have nowhere to go. No shit. I'd want to go to someone's house too. So I don't, I don't play that game really hard right now. I'm really focusing on being alone and I'm not sexually, like I'm not really trying to fuck around with all that because for me, it's like, I want to do it when it's a, when it's a challenge. I want to go to a bar and like see someone. And then that's the goal is to like make a conversation. Not like, Oh, you're forced to be home. Me too. Want to sneak out? Like, I don't know. It just doesn't seem rewarding to me. And it also seems really fake that like, I don't want to talk on the phone every day to someone. You know what I mean? If I wanted to do do that, I would have like been in my last, I would have stayed in relationships. I don't want to do that. I want a breather. So pay attention to how people are talking to you and make sure, at least make sure if you're someone that's taking advantage of that and you're like, I'm going to fucking talk to every girl in the book. That's fine. But really look at it. And if you're taking it seriously, make sure they are too. That's all I'm saying. Make sure that even text them, hey, are we just doing this because we're lonely as fuck or are you really into me? Because it's a lonely time and they might not even admit it. So that's something to think about. This, these are Angelo's tips. Um, another thing is that I realized that like sex isn't that, that awesome because you can beat off or you could go masturbate. And for all the people that are worried, because I, I am partially like a germaphobe too, I don't really want to, like, I don't want to have someone over and risk getting coronavirus. So, okay, like, then you go watch porn. I think now, and, and when what that's doing for people is it's teaching them how to satisfy themselves. And now more than ever, when you do it with sex or like whatever, getting off, 
that's one thing. But now it's going to be like, I don't want to go fucking, I don't need to go out to eat with people. I'll just go alone or I'll just cook at home. Like we're training ourselves to be very independent. And I really fuck with that. And as a guy that's pretty, not desperate, but as a guy that's like usually relying on sex to kind of give him a little bit of a boost, I feel like I don't need, I, I don't care. I could go fucking without sex for three years because I'm just, and it's not even that I'm beating off all the time. I'm actually slowing that down too. I'm just enjoying life for like a lot less, um, like less things that involve other people. I'm just doing, you know what? I don't have to jerk off. I'll go play the Xbox and I'll get a few wins. Like, and I, and I think that it's really healthy for me because normally I get in fucking creep mode and I want to text everyone and fucking get horny. Not anymore. I'm chilling. Now you're texting me and I'm not even that interested. So I think that's good. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like after quarantining, but as of right now, I'm in a pretty good, like self, fulfilling stage of my life. Um, and I hope that all of you guys are too, because that's, that's huge. If you're not, then you're fucked. The other thing I realized is that I've never been more happy to have my parents divorced because for a lot of people, your parents are together. I have a friend named Sana or his name is Michael and I call him Sana and I FaceTime him a lot. And all the fucking time, he's like on FaceTime, his mom's screaming his name, his dad's asking him to do shit, his sister needs a favor, his grandparents are coming over, he's got to, like, and that, I'm very happy that it's just me and my dad, and I don't have to worry about that. So, for all the divorced kids, we kind of get a dub on, on, on this year, at least, or kids that are normally sad about it. I think you're enjoying being alone. I'd hope. I am. Um, another thing I realized is that, okay, look, I'm not a big outdoor guy. I do love to travel. When I travel, I love to go out. I love to walk around. I have a thing where when I'm in New York, I just fucking walk down like 58th and whatever restaurant I see that looks good, I go try it. I don't like to go to the same places. Um, and when I'm in LA, I always like to try a new like bougie spot, something that I'm planning on spending like 50 bucks for my dinner or 75 or a hundred even. Um, just because I want to like I like that. I like to be aesthetically pleased. I like to see new shit. But when I'm at home, I'm like always in my room and I'm on my phone. I'm working. I'm on my laptop. I'm watching TV. And the other day, the fucking power went out and it was storming. And okay, power went out. It's storming. We're in a quarantine. There's a fucking disease going around. You can't really see other people. So now all the lights go out and fucking everything. And I have like lights in my room now and shit. So it's very bright in here a lot. So now the, all the lights go out. I can't play my fucking Xbox. My phone's about to die. My laptop's about to die, so I can't really charge it. And I just really thought about, like, what the fuck would life be without all these, like, LED phones and shit? And I kind of got, and not sad, but I got scared. Because now I'm sitting here in, like, a pitch black room. And, like, the TV's, like, there's nothing to watch because the power's out. My phone, let's consider, let's say my phone, laptop, and TV, and my Xbox don't work what the fuck am I going to do? And that scared me. So then the next day I woke up and I was like, nope, we're going outside, not bringing my phone. I'm going outside and I'm just going to go for a walk. I went for a walk with my mom. It was very beautiful. We had very deep conversations, but it made me think that like, I need to get the fuck out of the house more just to get away from my phone. This is a fucking, this is a confession, quarantine confession. And it's kind of embarrassing, but I don't give a fuck. Um, my screen time, daily screen time on my phone, go fucking look it up if you haven't. Go look up your daily screen time. Go to your settings and type in screen time at the top search bar. My fucking shit is an average 12 hours a day. Do you know how bad that fucking is for my eyes? And like part of it is I'm always looking. Someone texts me, hey, I need a size 10 blue and black Jordan shoe that's fucking 300 bucks or less. It takes me about an hour to figure out what they want. I'm messaging him I'm, or her. I'm going to find the shoes. I'm getting options. A lot of that research work is on my phone. I'm also looking a lot into the meat business because that's where I'm headed right now. So I've been reading a lot of articles about random like places that have opened up and places from the past uh, company. I can't really say anything about that. I've been reading a lot. Um, and then on, on top of that, there's like my buddy calls me. I'm on the phone with him for an hour or two. And 
Then, you know, just daily texting whatever the fuck, texting people, let, making sure everyone's all right. I check in on a lot of people. I hope you're doing good. I hope you're staying safe. Um, so all of that builds up to 12 hours of being on my phone, which makes me feel like I'm dependent on my phone. And if that's the case, I got to switch that up. I think we really need to like, I know it's great to like say to stay home right now and I want to be one of those guys, but go walk, like go outside and walk and leave your phone at home and see how beautiful it is. Like, you know, the last time I saw a fucking reflection on a lake of like a beautiful sky and trees, I felt like I hadn't been outside in years Um, And I just haven't gone for walks a lot. So going outside, I really felt like I could breathe. I felt like a lot lot of stress taken off my mind. I'm talking to my mom, so that obviously helps a lot. Very therapeutic. But just to be outside and not like be absorbed by like big white lights that I'm fucking doing right now, uh, it felt really good. So definitely go out more. Don't, Don't do it with 97 fucking people, but go walk around. Like I highly recommend getting away from your phone. And if you're, scr- I'm, my goal for this week is to get my screen time to fucking six hours. Like I want to cut that shit in half. 12 hours is so bad. I wake up in the morning and I'm on my phone for four hours straight. Like it's just, even if, and even if I'm making money this morning, I sold a pair of, I sold two pre-orders of Flint 13s, which come out May 30th. If you need them, I got you. Uh, and I sold a pair of Royal toes, just butt naked in my bed. Fucking felt great. But it took me four hours to look at my fucking phone screen to do it. And that really bothers me because I don't want to be that type of guy. I don't want to be like so fucking sucked in. I hate that. That's why I actually liked going to work. Even though I hate that they tell me to put my phone away. Once I started finally putting my phone away, I realized that I enjoy the job. And it took a lot of like, I'm just standing around looking at my phone the whole time. It took that away. So don't get absorbed by technology right now. It's very easy to. Um, let's see. Yeah, I talked about that. So I don't know. The other thing is that I, I did hang out with, I hung out with one person. I hung out with one fucking person that was like a hangout hangout, um, within the past month and a half or two months. And usually I, when I was single before this and before the relationship, like a year ago, year and a half ago, I would get kind of nervous, you know, you're talking to someone online or you're talking to a friend you haven't seen him in a while or a girl that you think is attractive or a guy and then they come to your house, you, I fucking, me, me being a guy that doesn't get embarrassed, that doesn't give a fuck, I still had like a little bit of a rush of like kind of anxiousness, like a little bit nervous, a little bit like I don't know what's going to happen so my fucking heart's beating a little harder, you know. Um, I met this person that I hadn't seen in like a year and a half and I didn't give a fuck. Like I had no, like, I wasn't like, holy shit, I'm nervous. I just felt very calm and very relaxed. And, uh, when I'm going, like when you're going on walks or even when I'm at target, like everyone, I'm, I'm looking everyone in the eyes. We're nodding. We're saying hi. We're very friendly to each other. So I think that like we're expecting, I think what this means, my translation, is that I'm expecting a lot less of people because the fact that people are here is beautiful enough. And if we can get everybody to stop expecting shit from each other, it will be a lot calmer and a lot more peaceful of a world that we just, we see each other, you're not expecting shit from me, I'm just happy to see you. Once we could do that again, I think that that's going to mean really good things. Now, other than the realizations, I have some favorite things and I have some least favorite things um, that are my personal favorites. I didn't even write these down. I'm kind of just doing them from the top of my head. But my favorite part is that I feel like I'm really in control of like my who I want to talk to right now. Who I want in my life is completely up to me. There's no one that's going to run into me at a mall or run into me at work or like see me that I feel awkward seeing or that I don't want to see. Uh, I really choose if like, and I always do this, but you're just focused on it more. I really choose who I talk to. And if someone wants to call me on the phone and I don't want to fucking answer, I don't fucking answer. And that feels really good. And I think part of that is not only due to uh, quarantining, it has things to do with other things. But um, the fact that like, I just have a very like outsider's view on this, that's like, 
I, if I if someone's talking to me and I have no interest in whatever the fuck they have to say, I, I feel like I can just tell them. And I don't feel like I'm being confrontational. I don't feel bad for them. I feel like I can just say like, hey, I'm sorry, but I don't, like I'm going to go fucking call someone or I'm going to go play a fucking Xbox game. I don't care what you're talking about and I'm going to hang up now. I don't, I, I feel like I'm kind of turning heel on some people or maybe being a little bit more mean, but it's being a lot more honest for me and it feels fucking great. And I know that that's weird, but I, I when you're in a relationship and I, and I hate to keep bringing that up, but it's the only thing I compare it to here. Um, someone like, especially now for all you people that are, that are living with your partner and you get home and it's like. It, you're obligated to talk to this person because you live together, right? And even if you don't live together, you're still always obligated to talk to them because you're a relationship. But for you guys that live together, you're so fucked. I, I'm so sorry for that. That sucks. But uh, I, I hated towards like, I didn't like the feeling of I have to talk to this person because I do like to be alone a lot. And it was nothing against the other person. It was just me. I, I just need to be fucking alone right now. And finally being like the most alone that I've ever been, where most people find discomfort in that. Um, I think right now people are people are going through a lot of sadness and a lot of like, holy shit, this is too lonely. But now that we're getting used to it, for me at least, I fucking absolutely love it and I'm more like pushing people away than I am letting them in because I know that it's peaceful as fuck right now and I'm happy and I've got like I'm doing good things for myself and I'm talking to a lot of friends and now if I'm going to let someone in it's like you really got to be worth it because shit's fucking good right now and that's good. I think everyone needs like a good restart on on their like loneliness meter, on their fucking happiness levels. And I think that it, for me, it's doing great. I hope it's doing good for you guys. If it's not, like I said, I'm always willing to text or call if you need someone. Um, but don't make it too long. Cause like I just said, I might be like, hey, I don't give a fuck. No, if, if you really need help, I'm there. I'm always there to talk. And if you just wanna rant, go on Instagram live together, shoot the shit. I'm, I'm always down for ideas, so let me know. Um, so those are, you know, I have some things I like. I really enjoy, um, I'm enjoying some of the chaos and the chaotic shit in the world right now. My least favorite parts is that I guess, I guess this is one of them, um, that I can't like literally get on a plane and go at any time. I think that, that the feeling, and, and it doesn't even mean that you have to travel a lot, but just knowing that like, if I have to go see someone, I can get on a plane and go. That's probably going to be changed for years, for like a year or two. And that really sucks because I don't want to like, I really don't want to drive to LA. So fuck that. And I don't want to drive to New York because it's 15 hours. So now I feel a little bit trapped and I hate that feeling. Um, I, I could still go to like Michigan. I still have some people that I could see, but I don't like the feeling that I can't go on a plane. That fucking scares me because it makes me feel like, why Why are there planes in the sky and I'm not fucking on them? Even though there's really not planes in the sky right now. But when I see them, I get fucking sad. And that's the only thing that I feel trapped in that I, that I find discomfort in. Um, now, you guys message me and I got some... some I got some things here, okay? The first one says, the best part of quarantining with with my parents is taking them... Okay, this one makes fucking no sense and that's why I started with this one. The best part of quarantining with my parents is them talking about my wedding to a woman every day and how's it going to make them so happy? I don't, like, I don't understand that. Are they talking to your fiance or they're just talking to their friends? Or you're, like, I don't get that. Or you're, I don't know. I don't get that one at all. Um, next one says, the best part of COVID-19 and wearing face masks is when you're in a, when you're grocery shopping, you don't notice people. Um, people don't notice you, so you don't have to talk to people you don't like. That's a good one for sure. I've seen, I've been grocery shopping, and I'm sure people notice me because of fucking painted nails and like my outfit that I'm wearing. But I've definitely seen a few people and been like, thank God. Hopefully they don't fucking see me. And I walked right past them and we didn't talk. And they probably knew it was me. I definitely knew it was them. But we didn't talk because we got the masks on. One time, 
I was at Target. That, it usually happens that way. I've, had, I've seen like three people and I got to avoid them. But once I'm in Target, girl notices me. She comes up to me. She fucking pulls her mask down to start talking to me. She's like, oh my God, I haven't seen you in forever. Hey, fucking pull it up. We're not doing that. Put your Pull it up and fucking go that way. Go down aisle seven. I'm going down aisle four. Pull your mask up. I, that pissed me off because I looked at her like, no, not talking. Text me. What the fuck are you thinking? Also, obviously, everybody makes fun of these people, but it's kind of funny. Uh, all the people that are driving in their cars with the fucking mask on and they're alone. Don't know what you're doing. I saw fucking me and my dad yesterday. We saw two people within like a five minute ride masked up with the fucking hood on walking their dog. And nobody's around. Just walking their dog on the fucking sidewalk, masked up, alone. Don't need to be doing that. You could fucking take it off. You're alone, especially in the car. The car, is if your windows are up and you're in your car, you don't need a fucking mask, okay? That's not that hard to figure out. You've probably heard people make fun of it before, so I'm not original when I say that. Um, now, Angel, this is a, a longtime listener. I just want to say thank you to Angel for all of your support. He says, best part... I get to play video games all day. Worst part, it fucks with your emotional and mental health. So now I respond back to him and I go, what do you mean? Like, how how so? And he goes, uh, well, isolation is not exactly my favorite thing to, to do. I really like going out and being able to be with other people. Also, the constant reminder of how bad things are and how people are dying has my anxiety through the roof. Things haven't been great in Mexico. Um, I hope things get better, Angel. I'm sorry to hear that you're not doing great. But uh, on the flip side... I know that it's really like, I, you almost have to just pretend that it's not real in like a fucked up way. Like act as if it's real. Okay. And, and the, the actions that you do don't fucking go partying. Don't have 75 people over. If you're going to see people wear a mask, keep it under five people. There's only so many things you can do, um, to stay happy and stay sane and also follow the guidelines of like not trying to spread it. If you're going to see your grandparents, make sure you don't see anyone for a week or two beforehand. Like if you're going to be around anyone that's older than fucking 60 years old, like make sure you're clean. Don't fucking put the elders at risk so you could have a fucking Corona and see your friends. Like be smart about it, obviously. But when it comes to what you take in entertainment wise and media wise, I really try to make sure that I don't, I don't read that shit because we all know People are fucking dying. Trump happens to be a fucking idiot. Uh, the world right now, economy, financially, like all of that, it's it's pretty fucking shitty. But what can we do to like stay happy? For me, it's like if I'm going to watch TV, I'm watching Shark Tank, I'm watching the shows that I like, and I'm enjoying it. I'm not going to turn the news on and feed myself shit. If I'm going on my phone and, I, and I'm looking for entertainment, I'm going to YouTube, I'm going on Instagram, I'm not going on Twitter. I'm literally like not fucking with Twitter during all this because I don't want to see like headlines that are like 1,800 more fucking people died because it is sad. But as long as you act and you're, you're acting on it, you don't have to take it all in. You don't have to like subscribe to reading all of that. You know that the world's not in good hands. You know when it's going to be back up. So do what you have to do and don't overthink it and don't overread into things because yeah, that will make anyone sad. It's fucking morbid shit. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my only advice there. The other thing is that, yeah, like being able to, I'm thankful that I wasn't that like into social events and it, it fucking right, like right when I got into finally going to concerts, I'm finally hanging out and like going to big venues, this shit happens. Um, it's like, I was really enjoying it. I could see myself like wanting to go to shows every other weekend or whatever, but it kind of caught it at a good time. Cause I didn't really get a lot of like going to bars, going out. I didn't, I wasn't really too social before this. So I didn't get hit that hard there. I don't really care about that. Um, the other thing is like, if you really like the feeling like, and this is not good to say, but if you really like the feeling of getting drunk, you don't need other people to be there. And I know that that's not good. And I'm not saying go get drunk when you're alone, but it's like, if that's what you're going for, if you really just want to get hammered then fucking do it in your room, like have fun. 
people make it fun and that's why you should be going out to see other people and not really focusing on the drinking part because the people make it fun, right? Unless you're one of few that you just love to get bombed, then fucking go get some Trulies or whatever you drink and get fucked up in your room and go to sleep. Like, go ahead, have fun. Um, next, next, next person says, the best part of quarantining at my parents' house is definitely the fact that they pay for every cable channel. And channel 857 is running a marathon of every single Law & Order episode ever and we're only up to about 1998 right now so i'm good for a while see enjoy healthy entertainment don't feed yourself negative shit now this one is my brother and this is what he says favorite parts being able to eat raisinets without having to go to the movie theater and then he puts in parentheses amc i pick classic cinema century theaters etc yeah we get it um the worst part for my brother is, the this is quote unquote, the man with the large eyes talking to me from the other side of my window late at night. I can't understand what he's saying because he speaks so quietly and so fast. And then he put like a, like a sad, like a, one of these, like those faces. <laughs> that's, that's my family for you. By the way, if any of you guys ever go on my Instagram lives, my family sucks with that. My brothers type the dumbest shit. My good friends type even dumber shit. My cousins do it. Everybody just everybody just busts my fucking balls all day. Um, all right, next one. Favorite. Only thing I look forward to is working out now and making TikToks. Least favorite, not being able to kiss my friends. Yeah, how sad that you can't kiss your fucking buddy. I miss going up to Carter and just fucking, just laying a big fucking right on his cheek. I miss that. Me and my boys, we would always see each other. We'd make out. It would be great. It would be like a nice make out hello. You know, and, and, and it sucks. It's sad. It's sad that we can't kiss goodbye anymore with our with our friends. Um, working out, I, I'm getting into working out. I'm, get, I'm finally getting a groove. Um, but I also... I also don't, you know what? Here's what I realized too. This is another quarantine realization because I'm like starting to work out more and I've been, I've been working out consistently probably now for three months. I was doing it before on and off and now I'm like, I have a fucking groove and I'm not like going hard as fuck, sweating my ass off. I sweat a little bit. I do a little bit and that's fucking it. But what I realized is that I never want to be like fucking jacked out of my mind. I never want to be able to put my hand around my arm and it barely goes to the half. I want to be able to grab my arm a little bit. I like, I don't want to be muscle fucking jacked. I just want to get a little, I want to look skinny, a little bit cut and that's it. Like as long as I can keep what I got going now, I'm happy with it because what the fuck do people get like so jacked for? There's so many people that I know that are huge that are just like, they look great, but what do they do every day? They go and work out and that's what they do. And they look in the mirror. Like they're not, they're not like throwing fucking cars over. Like there's no job that you need to be that. I mean, I guess maybe construction and like lifting. If you're lifting heavy shit and you're lifting like 700 pound boulders by hand, then yeah, go get huge as fuck. But other than that, it's so weird. Like I just, I don't like the like... I don't want to look like a fucking ape, like a gorilla weight. Gorillas probably weigh 800 pounds, right? I don't want to, I don't want to weigh that much. I wonder how much a gorilla weighs. We don't think about that type of shit. Um, this girl says, favorite thing, I've had three different colors of hair and I've been finding myself again after this breakup. Fucking same, retweet. Least favorite, I can't teach my kids in class and it's absolutely killing me. Yeah, she's a teacher, so... She does like Zoom with her students, which sucks because it's not the same. It's not the fucking same. And I know that like, I don't know anything about being a teacher, but I know that for all like the businesses that are having like business meetings, it's just fucking different. If you're really trying to read someone in person, you can read their body language, what they're doing under the table, if they're nervous, if their hands are shaking, like whatever the fuck they're giving off, you can't really see when it's only like neck up Zoom mode. And they're so comfortable because they're in their house. So you can't really pick them apart or see if they're lying or any of that. When I'm in a fucking business meeting, 
I'm, I want to tear the person apart just with my eyes and I can't do that. So that kind of sucks. I also like don't have business meetings like that, but I'd imagine that I would pay attention to little shit like that. Um, this guy says, I've been listening to your episode while counting cash for my local target and I got exposed by a positive team member yesterday. Time to start my two weeks alone. About to be a part of that unemployment check gang though. So I don't know if he's saying it's my fucking fault. Like, oh, I was listening to your podcast and I was counting cash. I didn't think. But if that's the case, then hey, Kicks and Giggles has caused one COVID-19 case. And that's a lot less than 200000 So I'm I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm sorry, but sorry, bro. Um, okay, here's my take on unemployment really quick. I just want to, we don't really have to talk about this, but I just want to say two things. And I don't know if it, this is even how it works, but I, first of all, I don't want to just be like given money and I'm, and I'm not doing anything because I don't want to get stuck thinking that I'm getting paid to play Xbox and fucking hang out, right? So I don't, I'm not going for unemployment. Um, I, I could use the money. It has nothing to do with like, oh, I'm too good for it. I could use the money, but also I know that there's like, plenty of people out there that have kids that need to put fucking food on the table that like pay a lot of bills. Like I have a luxury of, I get to like live with my fucking dad right now. And I don't have to worry about like paying too many things. I don't have a huge rent payment. I don't have a lot of that. I don't have kids that I have to like get their food and shit. So for me, when it comes to unemployment, like I'd rather someone else takes that that deserves it. I'm not fucking doing shit. I don't deserve the money. That's just how I look at it. Um, some people say like, well, there's enough for everyone. Well, I don't know. If, if it takes me two weeks to, to, if I applied right now and it took me two weeks to get like approved and there's a fucking one person in line behind me and now theirs is going to take three weeks, that's one week of their kids that are struggling a little bit more that can't get food or whatever the fuck and that breaks my heart. So I'm not fucking doing it. I'll work, I'll work my ass off later. I'll put in overtime, whatever the fuck I have to do. I don't want to collect all that right now. I'm at home. I'm 21. The fuck do I need that for? I don't like, I don't, I'm not going to say I don't like people that do that, but I definitely judge them a little bit. People that have money that they're at home and they're like, I'm fucking collecting anyways. It's like, all right, unless you really work your ass off and now you're fucking struggling and you need to pay bills. If you're not in that category, paying bills or having kids, then you're kind of, kind of a dick, kind of a dick. Um, okay. Now these are the worst parts, worst parts. Okay. This is one that I wrote down. So now I'm on TikTok. I was going to bring the video up, but I didn't fucking want to. Um, I'm on TikTok and there's a video of this girl's like hiding her camera and she's recording her mom. And the comment said like, I fucking hate this. This is what it's like living with my parents again. So she's recording her mom and her mom's like very serious. And she comes up to her and she goes, I heard you saying, um, you said, what the hell on the phone today? Okay. We're not going to do that. I also heard you saying, what the F not going to do that. You're going to respect our rules and we're, we're not going to be just because you're home now. We're not going to be talking like that. Fuck you to that mom that's fucked up and the girl's like 23 like really or it doesn't even matter if she's fucking anything over 18 that shit should be out the window any of your parents that are like telling your kids like we're not gonna be swearing today get fucking something else to worry about go fucking start knitting go do puzzles start painting like you gotta get busy because you're not doing it right uh, maybe I just say that because I was not really hardcore disciplined as a kid from my parents. I was very loose, very like do whatever, but um, it benefited me because clearly I'm fucking great with networking, great with talking to people. I don't like go up to a guy and say some fucking racial slur out of my, like I'm not, I'm not poorly trained and I was trained that it was okay to swear. So uh, fuck parents like that. And I, and I feel for all the 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 year olds that are coming home from college and you got to deal with your parents that are just strict as fuck. Like you got to break through. You have to break through to them because literally if it takes you the three months of quarantining to sit down every single day and be like, guys, 
you are too fucking strict. I need you to accept me. I'm going to start doing this. You're going to take the fucking swearing. Like you need to let them accept you for who you are because don't let your parents make you like two different people. When you're out, you're someone else. Don't let that shit happen because that'll fuck you and it'll fu- and I've seen it and it'll fuck you. So don't let that shit happen. Um, could you imagine if my mom ever came up to me? Now, this is me and my mom. We have a different relationship. But if my mom ever came up to me and she was like, you can't be saying what the F. We can't be doing that. I'd be like, mom, are you fucking kidding me? Like if you're dead serious and it really hurts you and it makes you feel like sad, I will fucking respect it. But if you're just doing this because you're bored and you want to say shit, nah, nope. Like unless you raise the kids from age six, don't try to start telling them shit now because they're home. I, I, I would be a fucking great dad. I would either be a great dad or fucking awful. There's no between, but I think I'd be great. Um, Worst part of quarantining is, this person says, worst part of quarantining with a partner is wanting to respect their wishes when they want to be quote unquote left alone, but physically not knowing how to. Yeah, I just, I can't, can't do it. I'd have to be in a mansion because I like, that's what I've realized too, is that I can't live with someone. I'm not ready for that yet. I don't even want to live with guy friends anymore. Like maybe one person, I'll do a two bedroom. I used to have a plan that I wanted to live with like all my boys, four people, five people in a house. Fuck no. I need, I need to be alone. That's like something I've learned at 21 years old. I need a lot of time alone and in order to like, I don't know, balance things out in my head, think about shit right, overthink things, under whatever it is, I need time alone in order to fucking be happy. The absolute worst part of quarantining at home, this one I relate to, is my mom trying to have a conversation when I slink out of bed to get coffee in the morning. I relate to that for sure because like sometimes I'm in the middle of a game or I'm on the phone or I'm fucking working out and I just want to run to the fucking kitchen, grab a bottle of water or whatever, make a quick little snack and then go back to my room and my dad will be like, hey, um, you know, yesterday I was talking to my buddy and he was telling me that the that, you know, the more people are starting to wear masks now. And I'm like, yeah, okay, dad, I got to get going. He's like, well, wait, the weird thing is that now masks are going to be, masks could be rare now. And you know, that now you got to really try to, okay, dad, yep, got it. Masks are great. I'm going to my fucking room. Well, you, you know, Trump was saying that if he can get together a vaccine, we might be, okay, dad, great. I'm going to go into my fuck, And then eventually I just start like talking to him from here. I'm playing my game and I'm like, yeah, dad, those fucking man, I agree with you hundred percent. And I'm just playing my game because I, I, I know that it's not like, he's not trying to make me mad. He's not, it's just, he just wants to talk. It's fucking lonely. But at the same time, I'm just trying to, sometimes I just want to do my own shit. Why don't you worry about your own shit is what I should say. Um, the worst part of quarantining is that I live with my parents and my mom won't let, just let me sleep all day. Fucking rude. Yeah. That's another like strict parent issue is like, what's the fucking problem? We, there's nowhere to go. Uh, yeah. Why can't I sleep in until 4 PM? I get that it's a bummy thing to do, but do you get that? It's only a bummy thing to do if you have a job and you have a fucking school that you have to go to and you have people to see and you're blowing all those off to sleep. I'm not sleeping till 4 PM because I don't want to go to work and I don't want to go to school. I'm sleeping because I can't go to work. I'm sleeping because I cannot go to school because school's closed. I can't go see anybody. That's why I'm sleeping. And I'm going to fucking keep sleeping because that's all I got. Someone said, uh, Bianca said like, she messaged up. I didn't fucking screenshot it. She messaged up and she said her favorite part is sleeping all day and her least favorite part is sleeping all day. And I said, why? And her, she said her favorite part is that she gets to sleep because she loves sleeping. But the worst part is that she like feels like kind of a piece of shit. And like, I think she said her family thinks that she's a bum. I'm sure or if she didn't say that, then sorry. But I would imagine your family kind of looks down at you because I came out of my room at like 3 p.m. And my brothers are like, you're finally fucking up. And it's like, yeah, got nothing else to fucking do. Um, but now I'm starting to like get now I want to we're going to my plan. I'm going to go walk every fucking other day, 
go for a two, three hour walk with no phone. I want to start like really taking my time with everything that I do and putting technology at the back end of my day. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. This shit's going to fuck our eyes. That's what people don't think about, how fucked your eyes are. I should get, uh, I want to get those like yellow glasses that you that protect you from like blue light or whatever it's called, I mean, blue whatever. Uh, whatever the light is that comes from LEDs that fucks your eyes, there's glasses that you could get. They're like 50 bucks on Amazon that they protect you. I feel like that's probably a good investment right now. Even though it's $50 for glasses that you're only going to use inside, it sounds weird, but you got to think long term. Like, am I going to be fucking blind faster now because I was quarantined and I looked at my phone for way too fucking long every day? Who knows? Um, again, I hate to like, I told myself I didn't want to talk about quarantine a lot, but it's just, it's such a big deal that you fucking, it's so hard to beat around sometimes. Like I needed to get this one out of the way because I did my brother's episodes two times. I did like a arguments one. I did a, the kicks only episode. So I did like four. Now I wanted to touch base again with quarantining. I'll probably do it again in a month or two. But um, I do plan on getting a little bit more fun, fun, different content in uh, the next three weeks. I have some good plans. So on that note, I hope you guys all stay safe. I hope you all get out of the fucking house a little bit more. Doesn't mean you have to be with 90 people. Just get out of the house more. Uh, pay attention to how much you're fucking, how much time you're giving your phone and your laptop and maybe give it a rest because all the radiation, all the fucking LEDs, all the eyeball fuckage that you're doing can't can't be good for us long term so have a beautiful rest of your day and uh tune in next time when maybe john cena's on the full episode 